Good morning, and welcome to our live stream of sanctuary worship at Alamo Heights United Methodist Church in San Antonio, Texas. I'm Holly Gotelli, lead pastor, and on behalf of all of us here, welcome. We're so glad you're with us to worship today. And before we continue our worship time, I just want to let you know about a very important ministry opportunity that's coming up here through our church. Beginning on Sunday, September 13th, we will be offering a 12-week class on faith and race called Covenantal Restoration. This course will be taught by the pastors here at the church, and it will be on, online. It'll be on Zoom, so no matter where you are, you can be a part of it. And friends, I really hope that you will. This is a really important class. It's a class about a very important topic. It's going to enable us to have some very, very serious, and we hope, growing learning discussions about faith and race, I really do hope that you will make time to be a part of Covenantal Restoration. Um, you can register for this course through our website, ahumc.org. If you go to our adult ministries page, you'll find everything you need there uh, to be a part of this course, and you will find information about all of the other courses that are being offered this fall through the church. We have many, many opportunities to learn and grow in faith, and we want you to be a part of that. Now, friends, I invite you into a time of worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's worship together. Oh, let all who thirst, let them come to the water. And let all who have nothing, let them come to the Lord without money, without price. Why should you pay? the price except for the Lord the Lord and let And let all who are weary, let them come to the Lord, all who labor. soul find rest except for the Lord, the Lord. And let all the poor, let them come to the water bring the ones who are laden bring them all to the Lord bring the weak ones without mind to the Lord, the Lord. Come to the Lord. 
the water. Come to the water. you join us in this morning's call to worship. Come all who are weary. Of division, of hate, of disrespect, of shouting. Come all who are heavy laden. With too much, with too little, with anxiety, with fear, with anger. Come all who have hope. For peace, for freedom, for compassion, For the kingdom. Hear these words. See, See, I am am making making all things things new. Would you please join us in singing our opening hymn, Lead Me, Guide Me. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with Thee. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. I am weak and I need thy strength and power to help me over my weakest hour. Help me through the darkness thy face to see. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lead me, then walk each day with thee. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. Help me tread in thy paths of righteousness. Be my aid when Satan and sin oppress. I am put in all thy trust in thee. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. I am lost if you take your hand from me. I am blind without thy light on me. Lord, just always let me thy servant be. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I can. 
cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day with Thee. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. Lord, teach us to pray. So that the truth of your word resonates in what we say. So that we may avoid temptations as we follow you through change and uncertainty. So that we are delivered from evil because our eyes are looking for your good work around us. So that our daily work is fruitful in your kingdom. So that our singing is a light in the darkness drawing nations to your grace. So that we might declare your glory as we gather together. Lord, teach us to pray. Join us in the affirmation of faith. We are are not not alone. alone. We We live live in God's world. We We believe in God, who has created and and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who work in us and others by the Spirit. I believe those around me are my brother and my sister. I believe that we are not bound by racism, war, and injustice. I believe in dignity every day and that our brokenness can be healed. We We trust trust in God. God. We We are are called to be the church, to to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. I believe we are able to influence the events around us. I believe we can overcome oppression and violence without resorting to it. This means I seek to reject revenge and retaliation. I remember hate cannot drive out hate, only love can. In In life, life, in in death, death, in in life beyond death, death, God is with us. We We are are not alone. alone. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen would you take this time to share signs of peace and love with those around you and by sending texts or emails to those you're thinking of Goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, life is stronger than death, victory is ours, victory is ours, through him who loved us. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through him who loved us. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we lift up those in our church family who are hurting, sick, and in need. We especially lift up those who are suffering or have lost loved ones. We quietly name in our hearts those in need of your healing touch. Lord, bless us with your comfort, your love, and your healing. 
Heavenly Father, as the chaos of this world surges on with the troubles of COVID and the increasing traumas of violence and hatred in our country, give us courage to stand up against injustice in our world. Father, at the beginning of creation, you stilled the chaos with your Holy Spirit. Spirit, blow fresh and anew to enliven our spirits in your presence, your power, and your restorative work in our world. Give us eyes to see your leading in our days. Give us ears to hear your call and courage to follow it with our hands and feet. Lord, you lead us to love you and love our neighbor as ourselves, and in this become united in you and in each other. Thank you for the gift of this call together that makes us one as family together. Lord, in all that we do, make us to be more like you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. flexibility and joining us in worship in all these creative ways. Uh, This morning we want to turn now to another time of worship where we invite you to give your gifts. We thank you for your continued support and generosity of our community as it allows these ministries to continue. Um, Thank you for your faithfulness to this church and to God. Uh, You can go online and give at ahumc.org slash give or through text or by mailing your checks into the church. We thank you for your continued support. I'll keep my eyes on you When I turn my gaze to people They just let me down Your love is the strongest thing I've ever found Lord, I don't know why I tried to live my life by my own design. Living in your will, I find a peace sublime. 
so for now and for all time, I'll keep my eyes on you. All through my days, I want you always there before me. I don't care if wealth and fame choose to ignore me. Lord, I don't know why I tried to take my life back into my hands when all the time for me you had the perfect plan so I'll do as you command I'll keep my eyes on you give me the sight to always see you Give me the mind to want to please you. Give me the strength to do your bidding. Lord, it is fitting that I live my life for you. For you. I'll keep my eyes on you. When I turn to see from where I've come, I trip and fall. I know that your love will guide me through it all. Lord, I don't know why I tried to think my life was a throwaway. When you love me so much that you chose to pay, as I live from day to day, I'll keep my eyes on you. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full on his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Each week we gather together and join together as we recite the Shema to follow the example of Jesus. But I hope that it would become more than a recitation and it would be a proclamation that embodies who we are as believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Join with us. Shema Israel. Shema Israel. Adonai Elohenu. Adonai Elohenu. Adonai Echad. Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, Israel. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. The reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 through 15. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So throughout this month, we've been talking about the Lord's Prayer each week, taking it phrase by phrase, looking at it deeply, asking what we might learn new about the prayer and how we might apply it to our daily lives, especially in this most challenging time. And so this Sunday, we are wrapping up this sermon series called Lord Teach Us to Pray by focusing on one of the last petitions in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation. Temptation. We all know about that, right? Something we deal with all the time. It's part of our daily life. Temptation is very real to us. You go to a store and you're looking for a particular item and you go to the clerk because you can't find it. And uh, she's talking to her friend on her phone. And you stand there and you stand there and she ignores you while she talks to her friend and you tap your foot and you clear your throat and you look at your watch and still she ignores you. And finally you wave your hand and get her attention. Yes. And you tell her what you need. Eye roll over there. And as you walk away to pick up the item, you think to yourself, I am very tempted to give that woman a piece of my mind. Or you have an exam a really hard exam, physics, macroeconomics, court finance, and you've been studying the formulas on a little sheet of paper. As you go into the exam, that little sheet of paper is folded up in your pocket. They pass out the test. You take one look and you know it is going to be really, really hard to pass. You don't want to fail. The little piece of paper is now burning a hole in your pocket. Just one glance. It's so tempting, just one glance. You've just eaten an enormous meal at a restaurant, more than any person should ever eat in one sitting, and you're thinking to yourself that you just need to have someone wheel you out to your car in a wheelbarrow so you can get home. And then the guy comes by with a dessert cart, and he says, can I tempt you with this lemon meringue pie? And you think, oh, I really shouldn't. But maybe just this once, if I can talk my friend into sharing it with me, it'll be okay. It'll be okay if he brings two forks, right? Temptation. We know all about it. If there is any theological word we don't need to find, if there's any theological word that connects squarely with our human life, it's temptation. We know about it. We recognize it. We can see it coming a mile off. Why do we need to sit through a sermon on temptation? Well, friends, I want to ask you to bear with me this morning. Please don't flip to another website or another channel just yet. Because I want to suggest today that one of the reasons that temptation is so serious for us is precisely because we think we know all about it. Because we think we understand it. We can recognize it easily. We have a good grip on it. But friends, truly, this is false. It's just not true. And if there is any text that can help us on this point, can help us understand better the nature of temptation, it's the story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. You remember this story, right? It takes place before Jesus even begins his public ministry. He goes to the River Jordan and he's baptized there by his cousin, John the Baptist. And then the text tells us that the Holy Spirit drives him out into the wilderness where he spends 40 days and 40 nights praying and fasting and being tempted by the devil. Now, friends, our, uh, our wonderful theologian and preacher, Fred Craddock, one of my favorites, says we got to be really careful with this text, very careful. 
Because if we're not, it's just really easy to think about it like a cartoon, you know, sort of in terms of a comic strip. You've got the frame, and here's Jesus over here in the corner. And then over here, you have a red figure with a tail and a pitchfork. Maybe they've got the little word bubbles coming out of their mouths, right? And we think to ourselves, well, that's what temptation looks like. But it's not. Friends, temptation does not look like a cartoon. If it did, even the weakest among us could spot it coming a mile off and batten down the hatches if it came in the door looking like a Halloween devil, but it doesn't. Oh, temptation is much more crafty than that, much more complex than that. One of its most common and effective disguises, in fact, is as the voice inside our own head. So maybe if we were going to draw out this text as a comic strip, we'd just put Jesus in the frame. He wouldn't be alone, but he would be the only one that we could see. Do you see, friends, that one of our biggest issues with temptation is that we think it's going to come striding into the room in a black hat like a villain from an old movie western, but it just doesn't work that way. Look at how Jesus is approached in the text. The tempter comes to him and says, Jesus, good to see you. You look famished. In fact, you look terrible. Have you been eating anything? You haven't, have you? You're really, really hungry. Well, my goodness, you're the son of God. There's something wrong with us. You shouldn't be hungry like that. After all, you have a very important ministry ahead of you. It's going to take strength. You need your nourishment. Why don't you just turn those stones over there into bread and have a nice meal? It'll just strengthen you for your work. That makes sense, doesn't it, Jesus? There's nothing wrong with that. And oh, I know you didn't ask me for any advice, but let me just offer this one tidbit because I care about you so much. On these miracles you're going to perform, you know, you really do not want to get up in front of a crowd and do that for the first time. What if something went wrong? Probably best to practice. I'll be your audience. Why don't you just jump off the top of the temple? Scripture says you won't be hurt. God won't let that happen to you. No harm done. Then you're ready. When it comes time to offer those miracles, that will mean more people will believe. And that's what we want, right? More people to believe? There's nothing wrong with that. Is there, Jesus? And then there's the issue of power. Now, I know you've got some concerns about that, but let me tell you, power is very important. You need a lot of power to be effective in this ministry that you're about to embark on. You want people to believe in you. You want them to bow down to you, do you not? You need them to submit their lives to you. So have I got a deal for you? You worship me, and I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. That will enable you to cause millions and millions and millions and millions of human beings to bend to your will, to do what you want them to do. And there's nothing wrong with that, is there Jesus? Isn't that a good thing? Doesn't all of this make sense? Friends, do you see how Jesus is approached? In terms of what is reasonable and good and helpful, that is temptation's favorite package. Bishop Will Williman tells a very enlightening story about teaching this text, the story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, to a Sunday school class one time. And he gave a thorough lecture on the text, and then they, they discussed each one of the temptations, all three, and Jesus' response to those. And then Willeman turned to the class and said, now, what does temptation look like for you today? And a young man spoke up first. He said, temptation, 
is when your boss comes in to your office like mine did this week and says, congratulations, you're getting a raise and a promotion. We're giving you a bigger sales territory. You're going places in this company, young man. We're excited for you. And the young man said, he replied to his boss, well, uh, thanks, but I don't want a bigger sales territory. I'm already gone from home four nights a week. I don't get to be with my wife and my baby daughter the way I want to be, the way I know I should be. It wouldn't be fair to them. Oh, says the boss. Take a minute and think about this. This is a big promotion, and think about the money. It takes a lot of money to raise a family these days. You want to be a good provider, don't you? Sure, your baby daughter doesn't need that much money right now, but in the future, she will. She really will have needs, and you want to be able to meet them? No, oh, when we were talking about giving you this raise up in the boardroom, well, we were actually thinking about your family and how this might benefit them. And that, said the young man, is temptation. Do you see, friends, that temptation is really not about cheating on the test or telling a lie or eating the lemon meringue pie? It's about something so much more profound than that, so much deeper than that. And this story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness can help us get at that greater, deeper thing. Temptation's fundamental question, you see, is not, hey, would you like to do something wrong? Temptation's fundamental question is, hey, would you like to compromise who you are? Jesus' temptation was not about turning stones into bread or jumping off the top of a building. It was about compromising who he was, what he was about, who God called him to be. He's not even begun his public ministry. He hasn't performed one miracle, preached one sermon, called one disciple. He's just been baptized, and the tempter is right there saying, Hey, would you like to compromise who you are? Draw pleasure from earthly things rather than God. Accumulate power rather than give love. Serve me rather than God. Do you see, friends? Temptation goes to that question, who are you? And what is your life about? It goes to the core of our identity. God has given us wonderful and terrible freedom, friends. And I use those words deliberately. Wonderful and terrible. Real choice. Wonderful freedom because we are free to choose the good. And terrible because it, it, it also means we have the ability to choose what is wrong what is harmful, what is selfish, and ultimately even what is evil. God risked when God created human beings and gave us free will, and we are able to choose to be who God created us to be or not. Jesus understood this because he lived it. He experienced real temptation. So when he taught his disciples to pray, he included this phrase, lead us not into temptation. Friends, Jesus isn't talking about resisting the temptation to eat lemon meringue pie or even cheat on the test. Jesus is talking about resisting the temptation to compromise who we are. And let me be clear on this. When we pray, lead us not into temptation, we are not asking God to refrain from leading us into sin because God doesn't lead us into sin, friends. God is on our side. In fact, James 1, 13 and 14 says, God tempts no one. Our temptations come from our own desires which entice us and lead us astray. 
drag us off, as the way one translation puts it. Psalm 23 tells us that God leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So friends, when we pray, lead us not into temptation, I encourage you to look at this phrase in two parts. Lead us and not into temptation. Lead us. I hope you pray that every day. We should all be praying every day, lead me, Lord. Lead me in your paths of righteousness. Lead me in the way that you would have me go. That's what lead us means. Lead us as a people in the way that you would have us go, God. Not into temptation. Not on the path that I would follow myself. Not the path I would choose without you, Lord. So when we pray, lead us not into temptation, we are saying, lead us, Lord, in the way that you would have us go and not in the way that we would choose for ourselves. And because Jesus teaches us to pray this way, we can trust that God will, will lead us, that God will help us resist temptation, that God will help us put our feet on the right path, the path of righteousness, and not the path that would lead us to compromise ourselves and be less than who God created us to be. My friends, this is the last week of the sermon series, but my request of you goes on. From the very first week, I've asked if you would please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer every day, every day, between now and the end of the year. And I hope you're doing that. But especially this week, I, I want to urge you to pray the prayer with special attention to this phrase, lead us not into temptation. Take time this week with God, will you? Sit down and ask yourself, who am I? And what is my life about? Ask the same question of God and see if they line up, those two answers. If they don't, if you are off on the wrong path, if you've messed everything up, it's not too late. It never is. We worship a God of second and third and fourth and fifth chances. God will be faithful. So ask the hard question. Pray the prayer. And I promise you, you will be given clarity about who God created you to be and the path that you should be on. And as you pray the prayer and you seek to live into it, our God will give you the strength that you need to follow paths of righteousness for his name's sake and be the human being that the world needs you to be, a person of grace and love and peace. Will you pray with me right now? Loving God, we give you thanks for the Lord's Prayer. It is such a gift to be able to pray that every day and to be reminded of who we are and whose we are and what we are to be about. Lord, this week especially, we ask that you put on our hearts a, a clear sense of the path you call us to walk. Help us to pray this prayer with all sincerity that we would not seek out those paths that lead us to compromise ourselves, but instead choose the path that leads to righteousness. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Our invitation to Christian discipleship is to pray that prayer. Will you join me in praying the Lord's Prayer every day for the rest of this year throughout 2020 and pay special attention this week to that phrase, lead us not into temptation knowing that God will give you the clarity and the strength you need to follow his path and not the one you might choose for yourself. And now, friends, I invite you to join us in our final hymn, There is a Redeemer. Let's sing together.
Jesus, God's own Son. Thank you, O my Father. Thank you, O my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit. The work on earth is done. Jesus, my Redeemer, name above all names, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Hope for sinners slain. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and living your Spirit till the work on earth is done. When I stand in glory, I will see his face, and there I'll serve my King forever in that home. Giving us your son and live in your spirit till the work on earth is done. Now will you receive this blessing? Go now in peace. May the love of God surround you. May the grace of Jesus Christ redeem you. May the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit sustain you this day and always. Amen. Our Father, we chart in heaven hallow it be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for her.